What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is episode 16 of building a $20 sneaker collection. That's crazy. I can't believe that. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you've never seen this series before, I definitely recommend starting from the beginning of the series by clicking the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. But before we dive into an overview and generally what we're gonna be doing this week, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, me. So this week my sock brand Apothecary is dropping our very first collection of sock 3.0s. And to show you all what this collection looks like, I'm gonna show you this sick sizzle reel which we just made. If you guys want to grab any of the socks dropping as part of our very first Sock 3.0 collection, they drop this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Apothecary.com. And you can stay up to date on this release and future releases by following Apothecary on Instagram, which I've linked in the description below. But if you've never seen one of my $20 sneaker collection videos before, basically what we're trying to do is start off with just a $20 bill and slowly buy our way up to a crazy sneaker collection filled with retros and grails and eventually a pair of Nike mags. And so far we've been accomplishing this by going going to thrift stores and buying sneakers, cleaning them up and then reselling them, and now we're starting to trade sneakers, and now we're finding even crazier sneakers. It's just getting really insane and it's moving faster and faster, and I cannot wait to show you guys this week's episode. In fact, this week's episode might be one of the craziest and probably my favorite episode to date. I mean seriously, I can't overstate that enough. Today's episode is insane. We find a sneaker that was actually in one of my top 10 Air Jordan 1s of 2021 list, and also a bunch of other Jordans and Yeezys that uh, I just can't believe we actually are able to add to the collection. So with that being said, let me get you all up to speed to where we are at with the sneaker collection fund. At the end of last week's episode, we finished things off with $336.87. And I realized right when I posted that episode, I never actually said that amount in the video, or if I did, I didn't like make a big deal out of it. So if you guys were wondering where we were at last week, that's what we have, $336.87, which is actually not a bad amount of money, but it's also not as much as I would like to have. The good news is though, the sneakers that we bought last week on the Adidas Confirmed app and the sneakers app finally came in. So why don't we unbox these guys and find out whether we're keeping them or whether we're selling them. So let's start things off with a sneaker that I guess I'm less excited about. It's not a bad sneaker, but it's also not a sneaker that like I'm really hyped on. And this is the one that I may end up selling. But as you guys can tell, it comes with the, uh, the Just Do It tape. So it is a Nike sneakers release. You guys may remember what released last week. You may not, but you will in a second. So inside the first box, we've got a Nike box right there. It's an old school Nike box, an old school Jordan box. And then inside the box, we have got a pair of Air Jordan 11 Low IEs. This is the OG pair, I believe. It's a pair that uh, I never really wanted personally, but hey, you know what? I'm glad we hit on the sneakers at. I know this Jordan 11 has a lot of history. I know Michael played in this shoe. I know all about it, but at the end of the day, it's still not a sneaker that I like the look of. And no matter what the history is on this shoe, it's not something I could see myself rocking on a regular basis. So because of that, I'm probably not gonna keep this sneaker. There's definitely nothing wrong with liking this sneaker whatsoever, it's just I personally don't like it, and because of that, I am probably going to flip these. So, I don't think the resale on these is too good, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna try and flip these on StockX, or if I'm gonna try and sell them on eBay. I think StockX would be faster, because I could do the instant payout, um, which would be great, because then I could add that right back into the sneaker collection fund, or I could try and sell them on eBay to one of you guys. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with these just yet, but I will let you all know as soon as I do it. But the next pair that we got in is this pair from the Adidas Confirmed app. Some of you guys might know what this is, some of you might not, but uh, this is a pair of sneakers that I've really, really been looking forward to. So this is a pair of Yeezy Foam Runners in the Ochre colorway. Man. So I grabbed these in a size eight because it said to go down a size. Um, in my standard pair of foam runners, in my first pair of the Ararat colorway, I grabbed a size nine because I am a size nine, and that seemed to fit me fine. But in this one, it said to go down a size, so I did. Hopefully that ends up working out because I'm a little concerned that it may be a little bit too small, but let me try them on really quick with my new Apothecary socks, which by the way, come in four different colors and feature the new ISO weave, which actually, check this out, you can see it better on my sock model right here, but it looks sick and it feels great. Let me throw these on really quick, see how they feel. So they do actually fit better as a size eight. I mean, it fits almost perfectly, it's crazy. 
Um, I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, regardless of how you feel about the Yeezy Foam Runners, it's one of my favorite shoes of 2020, and I am gonna add this to the $20 sneaker collection and hold on to it because it is a brand new sneaker, it's in my size, and I do want it. So, <laughs> this is the next addition to the collection. I'm stoked on this. Well, okay, now that we've got all the new sneakers unboxed from last week, let's dive into some thrifting. So I decided to start the week off going to some outlets in South Jersey, and of course, the first outlet I have to stop by is the Nike outlet. And the first place that I go in the Nike outlet is the back wall or the hash wall because that's usually where people's returns end up. And I did find some pretty interesting stuff. I found this pair of flight posits, which is one of my favorite pairs growing up. I don't know why I like them so much. I guess it's because their foam upper kind of looked like Iron Man shoes, and that's what I always thought of them as, like Iron Man shoes, especially in like the red or kind of goldish colorway. There was just something cool and modern about this sneaker. Like I love the fact that it kind of looks like a car with a covered up back wheel. I always thought that was kind of interesting. Honestly, I feel like it didn't age as well as uh, I would have hoped, but it's still a nice looking pair of sneakers, and if I ever find a pair of my size at the outlet, I probably will pick it up. Pure for nostalgic purposes though, not so much because I think it's a good looking shoe. There were a lot of pair of red Kyries in this red and white colorway. I'm not familiar with what this colorway was, but apparently there was just a bunch of pairs of them available. And also this pair of LeBrons in this sort of light blue and white colorway. Not really something I wanted. The one pair of shoes I was somewhat interested in was this pair of Air Max 95s in this like recycled denim colorway. Definitely an interesting look, but I, I checked online and there wasn't really too much resale, so decided to leave that pair for now. Of course, every time I come to the outlet, they always have this pair of KDs. It's in the same size. It's been sitting for months at this point, no one seems to want to grab it. I don't really blame them. <laughs> and then the last pair that I found was this pair of Nike Adapt BB 2.0s in this blue colorway. It was actually a really nice looking pair of sneakers, and I do like the Nike Adapt BB. Now the price wasn't bad at $219, however there's absolutely no resale on this sneaker whatsoever. But if you are looking to grab a pair of Adapt BBs, this is a good price point to grab it at. Next, I decided to stop by the Adidas outlet, which is just down the walkway from the Nike outlet. I didn't have as much luck here as I did at the Nike outlet, which to be fair, I haven't really had much luck there either. But there were a few sneakers on their hash wall, like this pair of Miami Boost sneakers, which was not a bad looking pair of sneakers. I'm not sure exactly what the model is. They had some next levels, and they also had this pair of, I'm assuming, Time In. Adidas ZX 2000s or ZX 2K 2000s or whatever they call it, I don't remember. And then the last spot that I stopped by at the outlet was the Reebok store, which I had actually never stopped by at this outlet center yet. There unfortunately wasn't really too much at this store, however there were two different pairs of Iverson Question Mids, which I actually really like both of them, but they were both priced at either full retail or close to retail, so not really something that I was too interested in grabbing, it was 40% off. I guess 40% off 140 is not bad. I should have probably thought about that more before I left the store, but uh, regardless, decided to leave it. Maybe it was a mistake, I don't know. And then on the way home, I figured why not stop by the other Plato's Closet, which I actually don't go to that often. So looking at this selection, there wasn't really too many pairs available, unfortunately, today. There was this pair of Adidas uh, Flux something. This is a pair that was huge back in like 2015. I totally forget what the name of this sneaker was, but it's a shoe that I, I wanted a lot when it first came out, and then, Never grabbed a pair, unfortunately. There was this pair of Jordans. Not sure exactly what these are. I would assume that they are lifestyle sneakers because the uh, the midsole of the shoe is so thin and the upper is so flimsy. I, I don't really think you could play ball in these, but I don't think they have any resale either, so decided to leave them. Then I found a pair of NMDs, and originally I thought that NMDs moved quickly, and in the past they have moved relatively quickly, but throughout this series I've found out that they're not really moving at all anymore, and I guess it's just because the interest isn't there. They're very widely available, they're not hard to find. Even though the shoe was incredibly hyped up back in 2017, 2018, it's just not what it used to be, and because of that, had to leave it. Then I found a pair of LeBron 17s in this all red colorway. I believe it's a youth size. I think it's around a size seven. Maybe I'm wrong, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not too worn. There is some scuffing on the outsole and there's a little bit of knit wear, but not anything crazy. And priced at 30 bucks, not a bad pickup. And I feel like I could probably move it for like 50 to 60. So not a huge flip, but it's something. Okay, so after a day of going to the Nike outlets and the Adidas outlets and even the Reebok outlet, we did end up going to Plato's Closet, and I did end up picking up one pair of sneakers. I know this bag is like so crickly. I should have pulled these shoes out first. There we go. Okay, so we picked up a pair of LeBrons in a size 7. It is, I believe, it was a $30 shoe. I had the option to use my discount code on it or my discounted, like, I've saved up a bunch of points so I could use points on it. But honestly, I felt like I want to save those for something even bigger. So this is something that I felt like could be a relatively easy flip. The comps on eBay were like 60 to 70. Got these for 30, so there is some potential profit there. So we'll see what happens, but I guess on to the next one. Next up, I stopped by Urban Exchange, which is a thrift store around Fishtown, Philadelphia. And it kind of seems like this thrift store is similar to places like Buffalo Exchange and Plato's Closet, where they actually buy product from people and so they sort of curate 
appreciate what they have in store. And I'm gonna be honest, the selection wasn't incredible. There was a pair of Air Maxes, which looked pretty nice. There was a pair of Air Max 97s with some cheetah print. They were priced a little bit high at 65 bucks. However, they were in my size, so it was something that I did consider. Moving towards the back of the store, sort of hidden away in a corner behind all the jackets and t-shirts and things like that, you did have a couple more pairs of sneakers. You had this pair of Pumas, which I believe was some sort of collaboration. I'm not 100% sure. You had this pair of Nike woven sneakers that came in this sort of like pink and black colorway, not a bad looking shoe. And then you also had this pair of bright neon orange Vans and then a pair of Air Max 1s in white and blue. Now I think this is some sort of like Olympic colorway, I'm not 100% sure. So unfortunately this thrift store was a bust. However, I do have to say that their jacket selection was pretty decent. Just down the street from Urban Exchange is one of my favorite thrift stores in the city and that's Circle Thrift. Usually Circle Thrift has a pretty insane selection, but today unfortunately it looked like they had been pretty picked over. There was a couple pairs of interesting looking Converse style sneakers. I'm not sure exactly what the brand of these shoes were, but they were, they were Sonic themed, which is kind of cool. I probably should have checked on eBay to see if these shoes had any value because I think they were pretty much brand new, but unfortunately I didn't. However, I don't think that they did really have any value, so I'm not too mad that I didn't check. Next up, I found this pair of Nike sneakers, which at first I thought was a pair of Kobe's, but unfortunately it's just a pair of running sneakers in a Kobe style colorway. Decided to leave those. And then inside their glass case, they actually did have two pairs of sneakers that I was somewhat interested in. This pair of black Air Jordan 1s with red laces, which looked okay, but for 50 bucks, I just don't think that they'd really move for any more than that, so decided to leave them. And also this pair of Air Max 720s for 40 bucks. Maybe it could have sold it for like 70, but I don't think it can go for much more than that. I honestly wasn't willing to take the risk, so I decided to leave them. So obviously I just got a haircut, and whenever I get a haircut in Fishtown, Philly, I have to stop by some of the Fishtown thrift stores. And this time around, there was actually some pretty decent stuff. There wasn't really any sneakers that I wanted per se, but there was a Wii and a PlayStation 2 for insane prices. I didn't end up picking them up because they were missing like the nunchuck and the PS2 apparently didn't turn on, but they were both priced for like $20 each. Let me know in the comment section down below if I should have picked them up. I feel like Retro Rick would have picked them up, but uh, unfortunately this is more of a sneaker challenge so I couldn't grab them. But the good news is I did just get word from someone over at Buffalo Exchange that they might have some crazy Jordans for pretty decent prices because I just got them in. They're in great condition and uh, I really want buy all of them. So what we're going to do now is rush over to Buffalo Exchange and hopefully grab them before they're gone. So obviously I decided to go to Buffalo Exchange, which was about a 15 minute drive. However, finding parking was the worst. I had to park like a mile away. It was nuts, but I was finally able to make it to the store. And thank goodness that I did because there was a lot of crazy sneakers in store today. I've got to give a huge shout out to my friend Matthew, who actually works at Buffalo Exchange. He hits me up from time to time to let me know if there's anything crazy in Buffalo Exchange. And this week, let me tell you, there was some absolutely insane sneakers. In fact, this is just my first stop by at Buffalo Exchange for the week. So the first pair that I found was this pair of Embiid ones in a women's colorway. It was sort of red and blue colorway. Nothing crazy, nothing that exciting. I did find this pair of Raygun Air Force Ones that were pretty much brand new. It was kind of crazy to see these, but unfortunately the Air Force Ones are not the Rayguns that really get any sort of resale value. So because of that, especially because they were in women's size, they just weren't worth it. I headed over to the men's section to see if they had anything over there that was worth picking up. And the first pair that I found was this pair of Adidas Top 10s. Now it was slightly different than the pair that I picked up last week because it featured patent leather and came in this black and gold colorway, but it was a really nice looking colorway and it was actually in slightly better condition than the pair that I picked up last week. Next, I found this pair of Air Max 97s in this black and red colorway. These were a little bit different because they featured this sort of like silver mesh on the upper, which I had never seen before. I'm not exactly sure what this colorway was called, but after looking up comparable listings on eBay, it just was not worth the pickup, even though if you're looking for a pair of 97s, might have been worth grabbing. Then I found a shoe that I was absolutely stoked on, and that was this pair of Iverson Question Mids in this black and metallic silver colorway. It was in my size, a size 9, priced at $42, and it was brand new. It had never been worn, the bottom was completely clean, the inside of the shoe actually still had the paper in it, and I felt like I had to have it because it was priced really well at $42, it was brand new, it was in my size, and I'm an Iverson fan, so I had to grab it, definite pickup. In addition to that, there was also a pair of women's snakeskin 11s in this tan colorway. I don't remember exactly when these dropped, but uh, they did drop relatively recently. The one downside to this shoe though was that they were priced at $85. So I checked prices on eBay and unfortunately I saw most pairs selling for around 80 to 85. 85 bucks, there was really no meat left on the bones and I wasn't willing to spend that kind of money on this shoe that I couldn't even wear. Next up behind the counter, there was actually this pair of Adidas Yeezy 380s, pretty much brand new. They had been worn a couple times, size 13, so not the best size in the world, but it was still a pair of Yeezys at the thrift store, which is kind of crazy. Now unfortunately, 
this yellow and green colorway is not that popular and they were priced at 225, which is pretty much retail. So honestly, I didn't feel too bad leaving them, even though they were in decent condition, they came with the box and they looked like they had been barely worn. The pair that really caught my eye though and the pair that Matthew had told me about was this pair of Jim Red Air Jordan 9s. This came in a size eight and a half so I could rock it and I had to grab it. Okay, so we just left Buffalo Exchange. I'm lying, we didn't just leave. It was like a half mile walk back because there was no parking in Center City today. It was ridiculous, it sucked, and there wasn't any bags at Buffalo Exchange, so I carried all these sneakers with no bag, and it was rough. Huge shout out to Matthew at Buffalo Exchange for helping me out with these. So today's pickups are pretty insane, and it was definitely worth the trip. The first pair that we grabbed was a size nine question mid in this really nice black and silver colorway. Basically brand new, at least from what I can tell. Absolutely worth it, and I think this may become a uh, part of the sneaker collection because I got it for 42 bucks, which is the best price we've gotten a pair of um, Iversons for brand new. And then the other pair is this pair of Air Jordan 9, I believe, Cherries, I think is what they're called, or um, what are they called? Reds, I don't know what they're called, but uh, University Reds, maybe? I'm not sure. But a really awesome pair of sneakers, size eight and a half, in great condition. This is a pair that he actually told me that they had in stock, and it's 60 bucks which was not bad, better than I expected. I thought it was gonna be 65. The only problem is though, is that we spent $102 on today's uh, sneaker spree. And I think that brings us down to around maybe like 200 bucks, which is pretty low. So um, I'm gonna have to start moving some sneakers. I'm gonna have to be more selective about what sneakers I end up keeping, which is weird because like three weeks ago we had the opposite problem. But um, yeah, really happy with today's pickups and uh, can't wait to keep going. So if you thought that trip to Buffalo Exchange was crazy, this next trip is insane. Matthew hit me up the next day and told me there was a pair that I had to check out, so I braved the rain and literal flooding to get from where I live back to Center City, and uh, I went to go check out these crazy sneakers which he had told me about. So the first pair was this pair of Air Jordan 3 Lab 5s in a black metallic elephant print colorway. They came in a size 11 and they were in excellent condition. I was blown away by how little they had been worn, the outsoles were not that yellowed, and the inside of the sneaker had barely any lint in it, which I was impressed by. Not only that, they were priced at 60 bucks, and I don't know what they go for, but I know it's more than 60 bucks, so I grabbed them. But then we had the find of the week, and that is this pair of crazy Hyper Royal Air Jordan 1s in a size 13 for $85. I cannot believe that they got these in store, and I'm gonna be honest, when I first saw them, I didn't think that they were real but they actually do have people legit checking these shoes at this Buffalo Exchange, and I ran them through Check Check. Not only that, I knew if I bought them, if I sold them on eBay or traded them on TradeBlock, both of those services have authentication services, so I know that whoever got the sneakers would be getting a legit sneaker, and honestly, for 85 bucks, I was absolutely willing to take the risk, and I was pretty sure that these are legit, and after checking them out, I know that they're legit. This is the first time that I've been almost speechless seeing a pair of sneakers at a thrift store. I cannot believe that there was a pair of Hyper Royals, a shoe that just came out this year, at the thrift store. Granted, they were worn and they didn't have a box, but for 85 bucks, I know for a fact I could sell these for maybe 200, 250, maybe even 300. But my main plan for these, honestly, is to try and trade them and see if I can trade them up to something even crazier, maybe in my size. But I had to grab them. So I know it doesn't seem like we sold anything this week, and up until the end of the week, we didn't really. But the one pair of sneakers that we sold this week was actually that pair of Kobe's that we picked up from ThriftCon like two or three weeks ago. So the buyer of these Kobe's actually bought these sneakers for full asking price, which was $59 plus shipping on eBay. I had initially bought this pair of Kobe's for just 20 bucks, which even now still surprises me, and after fees and shipping, we were able to add $51.98 back into the sneaker collection fund. So after subtracting the purchase price from that $51, and 98 cents, we're left with a $31.98 net profit, which is a pretty incredible profit and also not that surprising because it's a pair of Kobe's. So to end off this week, the sneaker collection fund has $111.85 left in it. And hopefully we sell a lot of sneakers over the weekend because I'm trying to buy a lot of shoes next week. So if you would like to grab any of the sneakers that I'm about to show you guys or even trade for any of these sneakers, I've left links to both my eBay store and my trade block account in the description below. But with that being said, let's take a look at the sneaker collection collection so far. Okay, so here is the current sneaker collection. It's really, really filled out. I'm really impressed by it. I did not think it would ever get to this point, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of great sneakers here. The first pair is obviously this pair of Tim's. Not sure what I'm gonna do with these yet. I thought for a while I was gonna keep these. Still not 100% sure. You might see them showing up on eBay. We've got this pair of Adidas Top 10s that I picked up last week. I think I am actually gonna try and sell these. We've got the Vans, which we've been sitting on for a while. Still haven't sold yet. Picked those up at a yard sale. We've got these LeBrons picked up this week. We've got these Iverson Question Mids in this black metallic colorway, which I really love. I think I might actually hold on to these because these are just straight fire. <laughs> and then we've got these Air Jordan 9 Gym Reds, 
which uh, are listed currently. I'm not sure if they're gonna sell, but I wouldn't even be mad at keeping these because I think I can rock these. They're size eight and a half, so a little small, but definitely doable. We've of course got the three lab fives, which we picked up earlier this episode. Great condition listed on both trade block and on eBay. We've got these guys here, the hyper Royal ones, which is like the craziest pickup. I, I still can't believe I have these. These are currently only listed on trade block because I'm only willing to trade them. Not trying to sell them just yet. I might actually take them to a, like a sneaker event or something. See if I can do like a trade up challenge with these. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think that would be cool. We've got the Jordan 11 IEs, which I have listed on, um, Actually, I don't have these listed yet, but I will list these by the time the video goes live. So make sure to check out those. We've got these guys that we picked up last week. We traded for these with the uh, Ben Simmons Blazers. Clean them all up. They look nice. I have them listed on Trade Block. I may list them on eBay. Um, really like them, but I think I'm ready to get rid of them. We've got these guys, which I absolutely will be keeping. Pick these up from the Adidas Confirmed app, the Foam Runner Size 8, Ochres. Love them. And then, of course, the New Balance 550s, the ALD ones that are worth, I think, about 350 400 Probably the uh, the most solid sneaker in the collection currently. But yeah, this is the entire collection, minus the Timberlands because they're on the floor. Still can't believe this is all from $20. That's just nuts to me, but really happy with the way it's turning out. I think if I had my way, if I could keep some of these sneakers in the collection, it would probably be these, 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 and then if these were my size. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this collection so far. But with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire episode for this week. Now I would love to know your thoughts on this series and also what you think I can do to improve the series moving forward. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.